Hey everyone, Steve the Miner here. This is part four of my series, How to Find Crystals, Gemstones, and Precious Metals. Today I'm gonna to talk about alluvial deposits. For me, that's probably one of the easiest ways to mine. You get to hang out on a river or a creek, usually you get wet. I mean, even if you're on the side of the creek, you're gonna dig a hole to water eventually. So, um, pretty relaxing, a lot of fun, and nature did most of the work. A lot of deposits are in there because of erosion, uh, rainstorms, things like this. So uh, to get started, the very minimum you're going to need, pan, classifier, scoop, and today I have a geology or rock hammer, um, but I'm going to use it as a pick to break up gravels that gold may have settled on. One thing I want to get into immediately, and that most people don't do, is they don't look for the layers where the gold's going to have settled. The first thing you're going to have to do when you sample an area is go to the places where you feel gold may have settled, and you're going to kind of pick up the rocks and scoop up that top layer. There's going to be a hard layer, and you just scoop up as much as you can on top of that. Almost overfill your pan. I have a uh, Garrett, it's 15 inches. Uh, I want this thing snow coned, you know? Like I want a lot in there to make sure I see any gold that's gonna potentially be there. Cause at the top, it's not gonna be that rich. That's just gonna be your flood gold. Your, your next layers you're gonna look for as you dig will actually be uh, previous flood layers from really big storms. The larger a storm is, the more it'll turn um, the, the rocks and sand and all that under the river into a slurry. It's, it's kind of like mud and rocks just all moving and scraping that bedrock layer. And that's what's really going to put uh, pieces of gold and heavy elements like iron into these crevices in the bedrock. And ideally, that's what you're going for. You want to hit the pastry glares on the way down. Like if you see clear evidence of like, like let's say you're digging um, in the East Fork River and you got like a, a 10 foot hole, you're going to see um, two different uh, storms from the history of the river. You can see what depth actually became that slurry that I was talking about. And you're going to see all the heavy things kind of settled there. You're going to get like a, a dark brown. They kind of call it baby poop brown. And um, it's going to be a little rusty even. You'll see rust coming out of it because iron settled there, gold settled there. Uh, just really heavy minerals settled. So as you dig down, you want to pay special attention to those layers. You want to clean every rock with a brush on the way down. Little bits of gold can stick on these really heavy boulders. And you might just flip it out with a couple of your friends and not even check it. It could be a big giant nugget. Gold's really soft. It can bend around something kind of get stuck. And then the force of the water and all that helps uh, keep it on. So collect everything, even through the gray layers, but once you see the heavies, really take special care to get that dirt. And then um, your, your ultimate goal is to hit bedrock. You want somewhere where the bedrock went high because when that whole river is a slurry, it's, it's just, it's pushing gold into like any little crack that would be at the bottom. And it just settles there and stays there. And, and the more force that goes on it, it just blasts out lighter stuff and just collects more and more gold. So the ideal is finding that bedrock, getting into the cracks and crevices and actually prying them open. It's not enough just to clean what you think is the bottom. You'd be surprised you could pry it open and actually find something much deeper that's been collecting gold for a really long time and uh, who knows, miners before you could have dug down there, like if you're in a, a creek or a river, definitely um, someone could have got there before. But if you pry that away and get in there where the soft gold just got pushed and forced for so long, you're going to be the lucky one, you know. So you really got to get wet. You got to get in there. You, you can't be like a weekend warrior about it. You can't 
show up in flip flops and uh, just think you're gonna uh, bring one of these guys and uh, scoop a bunch of gold into your pan. You know, you really have to move dirt. That's the name of the game. And a, a plus side to alluvial mining is you will find crystals. And the ones that make it down to the creek and, the, and have been getting beat up forever, they broke along all of their fractures. And they're a little rough on the outside, but you're gonna have this perfect, flawless crystal, whatever size it is, you know. Um, whatever original crystal it was, it just, it broke along the way got rounded out like the rest of the cobble and it's actually uh, pretty sought after by uh, people who facet because it will have such a good internal quality it may not look like much on the outside but get it wet or get a little oil on it and check it out shine some light through it you'll see that's about all I have for this video I don't want to cover too much because I'm gonna have a later video where I'm actually gonna show you guys what I'm talking about Stay tuned. I'll see you all on Instagram and Facebook. I really appreciate the messages and it's cool to meet some of you, go on digs with some of you. I really uh, appreciate that and look forward to more. Take care.